this next poem I started writing in July of 2001 in New York City and finished it by the end of that year, 2001, in New York City. And it's called, There Was a Bad Tree. There was a bad tree, a bad tree that people hated. The leaves gave off a foul smell and the flowers had a bit of stink. If you got too close, you vomited. <laughs> the fruit was poison. One bite and you were dead. Everyone really disliked it. The bad <laughs> tree stank. And they talked endlessly about it and decided to cut it down. Get rid of it. They chopped with axes and barely made a dent. Wearing breathing masks, they whacked at it and whacked at it and nibbled and chipped oily powder from the shiny dark green leaves, got on their skin, blistered, and was really itchy, and they scratched bloody red. They put on protective gear with oxygen and went at it with electric buzz saws and heavy equipment. Working. 24-hour shifts, finally they cut it down. Everyone was very happy and celebrated the great victory, a noble deed, well done, and they went to bed exhausted. The next morning, the bad tree had grown back, had sprung up new and bigger and more beautiful and ugly. It was very discouraging. They talked a lot about it and cut it down again and poured gasoline on the roots and burned all the leaves and branches in a big fire. After the smoldering embers got cold, the tree grew back, bigger more bad and really gorgeous. <laughs> Other people had been watching from their houses, waiting their turn. They thought themselves smarter, with higher intellectual capabilities. They knew how to get rid of the tree. It was a growing plant, a wood tree that grew in the earth. They incinerated it burned the roots with chemicals, vaporizing acids, and robotic lasers. <laughs> Detonated on the ground, bombed from the air, hit with smart missiles, and bombarded with radiation. They made a firestorm and covered the ground with concrete and steel. The tree grew back, more fresh, more elegant, even gracious, and really ugly. The wood was harder, thick, hot muscle, and the leaves, full and lush, moved like underwater plants luxuriously in the breeze. It was extremely discouraging extremely depressing, a catastrophe. They had made for themselves a hell world. They talked incessantly about it and came to a big decision. The mayor resigned in disgrace and those who had worked so hard left, humiliated, departed, moved to the other side of town, stayed away. Then, out of the blue, appeared these beautiful people. They were simple and humble and a little like peacocks and seemingly well-intentioned with a great sense of humor. Radiantly relaxed, oozing loving kindness and compassion, they walked right up and started eating the leaves. They ate the leaves and enjoyed them, became happy 
and laughed and laughed and chomped on more leaves. You could tell they really liked the taste. <laughs> they pressed their cheek to the flowers, black velvet coated with transmission oil. They licked the sweet juices that seeped from the petals. The pollen was coal dust and petroleum gas. Burying their noses, they sucked in deep breaths, eating the smell. Great bliss. They discovered the fruit hidden beneath the leaves, overripe mangoes with sticky eggplant skin hung like testicles. And inside the fruit was rotting meat like liver. The special people got their faces into the stinking slime and really got into it, inhaling with their lips and teeth and tongues. They licked and drank the thick red juice. The seeds, like Kabu Shan rubies, seemed particularly potent and were chewed with great delight. The fruit contained the five wisdoms. The men and women became luminous. Their skin was a golden and their bodies almost transparent were clothed in shimmering rainbow lights. They became sleepy, yawned and curled up under the tree and took a nap. While they slept, music filled the air. Lounging against the gnarled tree trunk and protruding roots, their huge bodies, colored red, yellow, blue, green, white, rested in great equanimity and radiated huge compassion. Inside the tree was the secret home of many demigods, hungry ghosts, and earth spirits who were very pleased with all the positive attention being paid them. After years of abuse, mutilation, and destruction, they were thrilled, even though they were being ravaged and their flowers wrecked. At the root endings, there were jewels, diamonds and emeralds and rubies, which were stars in the sky of the world below. The beautiful men and women woke up and nibbled on the leaves again. They ate the leaves like deer, pausing between bites, looking up at the vast, empty sky. The leaves and fruit increased their clarity and bliss and introduced the nature of primordially pure wisdom mind.